Hi guys, this is Alex from Museums.com and today we're going to be looking at the drop down list widget which finally allows us to create drop downs within Muse. So as we can see here, we are on the Academia template to preview this widget and we've got two different types of this widget. The first one is the hover and the second is a clip. So as you can see, if we hover over this drop down here, then the drop down appears below like so with several categories and subcategories. Whereas if we go on the click option, as soon as we click on the menu, our menu appears below and the same format as we saw over there. And to get to submenus, you also have to click and it animates in like so. I'll quickly show off the other part of this widget, which is where you can actually set up a custom button, which is shown on this second page here, on the custom button page. So we can create custom buttons within Muse, which as you can see, when you hover, appear like so, with a different style menu. And it's still got the same functionality as before, with the same on this menu over here. We go into it, and the submenus appear with different animations. So let's head into Muse and see how these are set up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is drag our widget on screen, like so. And we've got two components of this widget. One is the actual list and one is the list links. This is where we're actually going to put the content for our list. So let's drag both of these off here quickly. So what's important to remember with this is the actual drop down list part of the widget will be placed where we actually want the icon to appear on screen. So in this case, I'm just going to place it in the top left hand corner and I'm actually going to pin it to the top left as if it were a menu for our website. So let's head into this option panel. And firstly, we can see that we have a unique ID part of the widget. So this is in case we wanted multiple drop down widgets on the same page, then we'll just give them a different drop down list ID so that Muse doesn't get confused. So I'm going to leave this as it is for this example, and I'm going to move on to the button settings. So this is where you can decide whether you want your default button or a custom button. For this example here, I'm just going to leave it at default for the moment. So we can also set our button size with this. So if we want a slightly bigger button, we can set it to a, a higher number of pixels like 50. And we can also set our button colors. So I'm going to set mine to white and then a slightly grayer white for the hover over, as we'll see when we preview. And then I'll come onto the drop down animation in a bit when we start looking at the subcategories. So let's preview this page in our site and let's see what it looks like at the moment. Okay, so we can see our menu in the corner looking quite big as I change the size of it. So if we click on it, at the moment we've got it set to only open when we click. So if we click, then our sub menu appears down below or our drop down. And we can see we've got categories one to four. So this is all working well. So I'm going to hop back into Muse and we'll quickly breeze over the styling options for this widget. So we can see here that we've got the drop down list set up and styling and we've got two options at the top which is the trigger on top or enable hover navigation. So the trigger on top basically sets whether you want the drop down menu to appear in front or below the icon itself. So if you have it appear on top then the icon will always appear above the drop down menu. With the enable hover navigation this is what we saw on our example page where we can either click to allow it to show or whether we can hover. So if we enable hover, then it should show the menu when we hover over the icon. We can also set the width of our menu. So if we wanted to go for a slightly higher width menu, we could set that to 300 pixels. And then our theme is where we can designate how we want to style up our menu. And we've actually given you six different themes to choose from and each one will enable or disable different parts of the styling options. So you can choose which one suits you best and then style it up like so. For this example, I'm going to make it a little bit Muse themesy and set it up with a few orange colours to demo that to you. So let's preview this in our browser and see what it's looking like at the moment. OK, so we can see our icon in the corner and now when we hover over, our drop down will appear like so. 
And notice how it's now got a much longer width to the menu like we set previously. So let's hop back into Muse now and we'll quickly turn our attention to the link list. So if we open the option panel for this, we can see that we've got four different categories that we can set. Now, like with a lot of our other widgets, you can actually copy and paste this to allow the widget to have more categories than is designated in here. Just remember, you must keep the same uh, list setting ID that you have set in this part of the widget so that they all come under the same drop down. So let's go into our list here and I'm just going to set up a few different categories. So for example, about portfolio, gallery, and let's do the final one as contact, like so. So now that we've got these four different categories set up, we can go around linking them so that when they click on the category, it will take them to a page. And we can also set whether we want it to open in the same tab. But this is the part that I really want to focus on, which is the icon class. So like we saw in the browser when we were previewing this, when we hover, we can see a little icon appear here. Now what we've actually gone and done is we've included a whole icon set which you can link up to from Muse. So if we go into this widget here, we can see that it gives us a link to click on to go and find some icons. So if we click on this here, then it will take us to ioniconscom and we can see that we've got a whole load of options to choose from down here which we can use. So for example, let's just say that we want to use the phone for the contact option. So if we click on the phone here, and we can see it gives us a class ID, and this is what we want to insert into our widget. So if we just select this here and copy and paste, and I'm going to go back into Muse now, and down by our contact part, I'm going to highlight this, remove it, and then paste in our class ID. So let's quickly go on to our browser and see whether this has reflected it. So if we hover over, we can see that now by contact, we've got that phone ID, which we saw on this page here. So you can link up to a whole host of icons and enhance the look of your dropdown. So I'm gonna to quickly touch on this part here, which is the link parent title. So what this does is it allows us to set up subcategories. So for example, if we wanted the portfolio page to appear below the about page or as a subcategory, then we could go to our link parent and set it to about, like so. If we then preview this in our browser, then we should see that the portfolio page becomes a submenu. So when we hover over, we have the about with a little menu and then the portfolio page appears across from that. So this is how we can set out submenus inside Muse. So as I touched on earlier, we can actually create more than four uh, links in our dropdown by simply copying and pasting this or holding down Alt and drag. So if I do this, then we can see that now we've got another set of options. So I'm going to quickly remove this from here. I'm going to set it to none. And let's preview this in our browser to see whether these eight links now are showing when we hover over. And as we can see, they do. So when we hover over, we can see that we've got eight different links with the subcategories still existing. Okay, so that's really it when it comes to the setup and styling for this widget. As you can see, we've got a whole load of options down here, such as font size, border size, and icon size, which I'll allow you to go through and look at yourselves and set up as you wish. So I hope that you enjoy using this widget and as always if you have any questions or queries then please get in contact. Until next time, goodbye.